Welcome back to another edition of Between Two Fars. I'm Warnicky Miller, and I am joined by Vice Chairman Judge Prouty from the Armed Services Board of Contract Appeals. He's been so nice to come and talk to us a little bit about the day-to-day -day inner workings of the ASBCA. And today we would just kind of like to kick off a discussion about general do's and don'ts of practice. If you were going to talk to a new attorney who was going to be practicing for the first time in front of the ASBCA, what kind of advice would you give them? Thanks, Wernicke. Um, besides the obvious, which is prepare, prepare, prepare. Um, and don't misrepresent facts that we're going to find out that you misrepresent the facts on, which of course you would never do. But besides things like that, you know, one of the first things to do is to think about your demeanor and how you hold yourself out to the board. Uh, because you know, we're not interested in people being nasty in front of us. It just doesn't help your cause. It doesn't show that you're zealously representing your client. It doesn't make you a more effective attorney because, oh, you're so tough. Um, you know, this is a job. This is basically, this is important, uh, but you can do it in a way that makes it more pleasant for everybody involved. I'll add that, you know, frankly, you know, opposing everything the other side wants to do just because they want to do it erodes your credibility. Uh, so if you're always saying no to simple things like extensions of time, things I'm going to grant, uh, you're not going to get anything for yourself. And it'll basically become something where I don't think it's important to you. Uh, if you're always saying yes, and they say, well, this request I have to say no to, and here's why, well, then I'm going to listen to that a whole lot more attention and realize, well, this, there must be some reason that this is important and, and maybe give you more break than might otherwise be the case. So that's one general overarching thing. Another matter that you and I talked about was, <clears throat> you know, sometimes witnesses tell the truth. Um, I, I've certainly had people in cases I could think of where I was positive the person was lying to me on the stand. Um, uh, you know, it could be on either side, frankly, to tell the truth. And, and yeah, people do that sometimes. And it's, it's, un, it's unsettling. And I know as an attorney, it's even much more, you're, you're much more upset when you know where the person's going to say it, and they've said something 180 degrees uh, from the truth. And the question is, you know, how, how do you deal with that? And uh, a couple things. Uh, one, uh, rarely does calling somebody a liar ever really act effectively be a piece of advocacy. Um, usually it's easier to find, you know, even if somebody says something that is not true or incorrect, it's much easier to, to, for a judge to find the person made a mistake and then they find that, oh yeah, this person made the intentional decision to lie. Because actually most times people don't do that. They do, but most of the time they don't. And calling somebody a liar is a big deal. Uh, so as a piece of advocacy, if you could A, demonstrate that they might have said something different in the past, and, and B, also sort of reconcile how they made the mistake about what they're testifying to uh, in a way that isn't sort of putting blame on them, but makes it very clear that no, the facts are actually different. Uh, I think you'd be much more effective in, in getting uh, the court to rule in your favor, sort of look at the facts in a way that are consistent uh, with uh, how you like them to be portrayed and how you think the truth actually is. Again, that's all sort of part of being the appropriate demeanor, uh, which also add, leads to the next thing, which is that, you know, for the NASA people watching this, um, you're the government and you have certain obligations as the government that uh, rightly or wrongly, I think actually rightly, uh, the courts and the boards uh, tend to have put higher standards on you. Uh, you're, you know, you're not expected uh, to put on shows for clients. Uh, we understand that sometimes uh, contracting uh, attorney, attorneys for contractors uh, feel the need to justify uh, to their clients that I'm really in your corner and I'm going to uh, make a stand on this sort of thing. Uh, you don't have that, and so we don't expect that of you. We expect actually just the opposite of you. Uh, we expect you to be a little more reserved than perhaps uh, the contractor's attorney. Um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, we also, uh, you know, I can tell you that back when I was an advocate, you know, you hated pro se cases, right? Because they're always a pain. They're always more work. The person doesn't know what they're doing. Um, they're, they're saying things that are, you know, to you, to your mind, uh, outrageous. And then and the worst thing is you look up there and, and the judge is happily smiling and nodding along with the pro se litigant and letting them get away with uh, evidentiary murder. All right. Um, <laughs> I've so, been there. <laughs> yes. 
Well, you know, uh, the judge didn't lose uh, his or her senses uh, just because a pro se person does all this stuff, is, is there. Uh, we recognize what the rules are. Uh, but we also recognize a lot of other things. Uh, one is that uh, they might have to polish, but they actually might be right on the merits. Uh, and they deserve a chance to sort of present their case. Uh, we also know that this might be their only day in court and that it's very important to them uh, to feel that they've been heard and listened to. Uh, they've got the card stacked so much against them uh, just by virtue of their knowledge and their ability to protect themselves uh, that, you know, it is not for the judge to make that any harder for them than it already is. We're going to hold them to the same substantive law, by the way. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, but we are going to cut them some procedural breaks that we might not cut you. And also, you have to understand how important this is to them. Now, you've probably got multi-million dollar contracts that you're dealing with, or maybe even more than that, that seem to be much, much more important uh, to the agency and to you as far as priorities and things of that nature go. But I'll tell you, for that $50,000 janitorial contract, uh, that might be the very most important business relationship in the life of the person who's before us and is a pro se contractor. And that person deserves their dignity, and they deserve to be treated like Yes, we recognize how important this is to you, and we're going to give you the opportunity uh, to make your case. And as an attorney going against that, uh, it is important that just as we're going to treat them with the dignity and respect that they are entitled to, just as a person who's done business with the United States, uh, you need to as well. And you know, sometimes it might be hard. Uh, sometimes there might be a desire to almost smirk at some things that are said. Uh, don't do that. Um, you treat person, the person right, and you know, as a representative of the government, uh, you will be doing what your government wants you to do, uh, which is to um, give them the dignity that they deserve. And that is, after all, why we have the Boards of Contract Appeal, and not just to handle uh, the very, very big cases and the very, very big decisions, uh, but to give everybody a crack at justice if they feel they deserve it. Terrific. Thank you. We appreciate the pointers and the insight for anybody who might be appearing before the ASBCA the first time or hasn't been there for a while and could use a refresher. And just the information you have been giving us has been so helpful. And I would like to continue this discussion. We have got different subjects that we would like some insight on from uh, attorney-client privilege issues to some others. So why don't we bring Judge Prouty back for a few more episodes and continue this discussion? <laughs> Join us again next time on Between Two Fars.